So first of all, I want to ask, uh, how are you doing? <laughs> How's your mood? <laughs> how are your Christmas oh, decorations going on? I think it's like, like a little bit sad feeling because the tour is ending. Like uh, there's only two shows left and uh, somehow I'm already missing this and thinking what the hell I'm going to do when I go home. Uh -huh. Because it's so simple. They're like uh, the bubble, the tour bubble is so strong. You just go to a different city go need to make the show happen some meet and greet and do it all all over again with cool and really cool and nice people for five weeks so it's strange to think that soon this all will be over mm -hmm. um yeah so let us try to discuss it on a positive note i really wanted to <laughs> ask you about this tour in case someone didn't know you've been touring with nightwish and beast in black and uh, are there any Funny stories to tell, any memories to share? <laughs> well, every day, basically, like, uh, <laughs> maybe I don't go to the details so much. <laughs> Can we talk so much about those parties? Like, of the, the whole tour has been amazing, naturally, uh, like you supposed, you can suppose it already, but uh, it has been like a one big family meeting in a way, because we know most of the Beast in Black guys and the crew and the Nightwish guys and the crew and the uh, I don't know we have like 70 or 80 people on this tour and basically everybody knows each other so it has been like a really good ride and the uh, whole atmosphere in in the group is it's just amazing mm -hmm. and uh, there have been so many laughs so many good parties so many good shows and <laughs> i don't even know where to start i i think if you ask me this question like uh after a month i can give you a better answer i think i'm <laughs> a little bit too close to the Evans right now. Yeah, okay, I got so it. So good, so good trip. Mm -hmm. That's the major thing. So the impression is totally positive. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, if we speak about uh, the crowd, the audience during this tour, so have you spotted uh, any people singing along in Finnish language? I have spotted, yes, there are some Finns who are, of course, audience like a german people or whatever who are trying to speak or sing in the finnish language and i think it's like lovely but still it's you know i think it's a little bit funny as well that's exactly it's what i also good. wanted to ask you so if you see that someone is singing along in finnish language uh do you think that he or she does it properly <laughs> yeah no no i love that they are trying it already because <laughs> Well, we all listen to the Ramstein as well, and I, I'm pretty sure none of us speak so good German as well. So, like, <laughs> the music is the only thing that matters, and um, well, and the beat, everybody knows how to dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. I agree. So uh, let's pass to discussing your upcoming album, um, Roman X. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, the very first question that came to my mind when I saw the track list was the absence of the song to be continued there. So what's the reason for that? I'm aware that lots of fans became a bit anxious about that. Well, it, it still might be there. Ah, okay. <laughs> and I think I can tell you any, anything more about that. You have to wait and see. Ah, oh, wow. Intriguing. That's very intriguing. Uh, and um, the other question is about the song uh, Hang It Up. Uh, which mm -hmm. was released last year as a single. I mean, I thought that it would be on that new album as well, but um, I mean, there was no this song there and this song was amazing. I really liked it a lot. Uh, why did you decide not to include it? I think it was more like a Kickstarter af after the Corona times, like a ah, band uh -huh. like so quiet for a couple of years and we are all, we are constantly making music and we can just wait for the albums all the time. So we just wanted to give people a notice that we are back even though the corona is still here we are alive and kicking and we are doing the stuff so no worries maybe it's more like a mental thing for the band but of course it's a good good thing to release music we are the bands and we want to release music but we couldn't release album yet mm -hmm. the global warning tour was still like uh it hasn't finished i, I don't think it hasn't still finished but nevertheless because of the corona everything was messed up we wanted to release one good song and I hang it a fit that, for that perfectly. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, if you go back to discussing the, the album, is it united by some common idea? It is united by the idea of the, uh, of the omen itself. Uh -huh. The omen is about you, it's about this world, it's about, well, it's about you mostly. We are just a mirror telling people what we see. Mm -hmm. So, and the, at the end of the day, we can also say that it's all about love in its all meanings and bad or bad or good. But uh, still, I think that's the main principle of the songs. Maybe we could say with one with one word, love. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> interesting and unpredictable at some point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are there any songs that you can consider special? For you personally or maybe special for the band well for me uh no well the quality of your mom the latest single that's like uh i love how it's like a little bit like a pop song but still like a turmian catalog song it's so different and uh, it hits quite well with that and i think most of the band agrees with this as well it's a uh, different but still one of the best songs in the album surely if, for my opinion and, and uh Personally, I think I would pick like Puoli uh, Valtakunta as well. That's uh, my lyrics and my melodies in there. And that is a really personal song as well. But uh, also there will be the song Kaut Tansin at the end of the album. I don't know, have you heard the album yet? But uh, it it's is. like, uh, it's a little bit heavier and a little bit like a synthwave song. And I really, really love synthwave. So then that's definitely a choice for me as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. But still, at the overall, the whole album is really <laughs> solid and really good. And, uh, well, I love it how it's so, there are so many different songs. Like, uh, we didn't just do Teorastea all over again. We did, like, a new kind of songs, a new kind of sounds, a new kind of everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, the following question, yeah, sorry for <laughs> trying to interrupt you. Uh, the following question was about the recording process of the album. So was it somehow difficult? Uh, different <laughs> was it somehow different not difficult uh from the recording of previous albums i don't think it was uh, much different because janne and the Petya, those maniacs are constantly making making music all the time they live and breathe from the music and our factory never closes we just make music and make music and make music and at some point we just have to release an album and that and uh the problem with the albums is that we have too many good songs already from which we have to pick the songs for the album and maybe something different with this album was that we had so many good songs that it was like a, it was what's really hard to pick which songs should we choose for the album i think that's the one of the major things that i noticed was different but uh the making of the album the producing of the album or the mixing of the album like Janne was doing all the mixing mastering stuff and composing stuff and everything like that, and Petya as well. I think those went quite the same way as we have done before as well. Of course, we had lots of time this time because of the corona. We had time to think about the songs and like uh, really make them good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, now I would like to discuss your music videos and uh, <laughs> dedicate a bit more time for that because I'm always uh, in awe <laughs> when I watch your music videos. And this time we saw like your um, humorous and um, like comedic side in Sorman Yalkin and um, two other music videos were um, seemingly united by some common idea. Yes, and mm -hmm. uh, this idea was more of like a uh, horrifying origin. And uh, it also seemed like it was united by some, um, by I mean, by you trying to cover some social problems. I mean, am I right? Uh, or was it just like about some creepy child story, sort of? I think it's more like uh, what you see in it. It's not our role to tell what you have to see it or what it's all about. Like I said, we are the mirror and uh, we can, uh, I'm pretty sure many will find some social problems. There are like uh, problems with uh, parents or broken families and stuff like that. Of course, that's quite obvious in there, mm -hmm. but still, it's more like the, the choice is still yours to decide what you see in the video and what you think it's all about. And I really love when I'm writing lyrics, I love how they leave like a little blanks in the lyrics in a way. 
that every listener will fill in the blanks to fit their own life or their own situation or their own problems. And that way the song can live so much more because uh, it can. It, it's not all about what I want to tell with the story. It's more like what they want to hear in the story. Mm -hmm. And Rauli did really good work, the director of the music videos, Tuba. That he did really good job with the music videos and uh, nailing the idea of the songs as well. Mm -hmm. At least my point. Yes, yeah, so if we have started talking about like comedic side and horrifying side, so what are your favorite uh, comedies and horror movies? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, favorite horror movies. Hmm, that's a good one because there has not not, not nothing been so many good horror movies anymore anymore. Agree. Like new, totally uh, agree with you here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, those old ones. Like, uh, for example, we watched the the thing, the science fiction horror movie from back in the eighties, with the beast in black guys in the bus, like uh, two or three days ago. And uh, of course, it's an old movie, so it's not so horrifying anymore. But when I first watched it as a kid, I remember I didn't sleep it for a week. So it was so horrifying then. <laughs> uh, but basically everything like more psych psychological horror is more for me. Like, uh, of course, there can be maybe some monster or creeps. But if it goes all to the blood and splatter, I, that's not for me. I love how it's like a more psychological and uh, it like gets under your skin by that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But can't really name you one right now at this moment. Maybe the last night's after party is taking a little bit tall. Head is going a little bit slow right now. Uh, okay, I got it. And what about uh, comedies? I mean, I asked about comedies as well. Or well, you don't like oh. any? Uh -huh. well, I like comedies, <laughs> but like, uh, to be honest, I think I, I go more with animation if I want to see something soft and comedy, like uh, Shrek or something like that. It's good uh -huh. stuff like uh, just sit on the couch and it goes there and there's like a funny things happening on screen and you don't have to focus on so much. But the, I don't like, a, there was those American Pie and American style comedies. I don't really enjoy them. If we, if we want to have a, like a good comedy, it, it would be like, uh, mm, uh, I don't know what I'm in English. Hannu, mikä hauska, kun he me leffa tai? Tai sitten ne airplane and... Uh, there are so many uh, people in the room actually. We are, Hello we are to backstage everyone. right now. Yeah. So there's a half of the band in here as well. Ah, <laughs> and okay. the crew as well. And Saat tulla Pascal Ehata. And now it seems that there are beast in black people coming as well. Ah, amazing. <laughs> but yeah, like old school comedy. Uh, but I think those are a little bit too inappropriate right now to show many of those jokes. I think they are not fit in this world anymore. But... Well, I don't know. If we go back to your music video, I mean, I seriously am afraid of pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> so, I mean, it's uh, Sermon Yalkin. I'm very bad at Finnish. Quite good. Quite good. Thanks. So, I mean, it really uh, has a strong resemblance with uh, old school comedy movies. I mean, black and white movies with uh, Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton. And that's yeah, great. And, some Benny Hill, and Benny Hill stuff or something like that. Like, uh, or something like that. And something like that. Yes. But uh, those were all like Rowley's choices. And we loved how they get the idea. Like, let's do like old school Finnish comedy or... Like you said, like a Chaplin style, like uh, everything was a little bit fast forward all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, that was Rowley's idea, and uh, I think that was really like a new way, a new perspective to the song, as as well as the Sormialki song is not so, like I said, it's not so dark or anything. It's like a funny song more, and it it fit it's, it fits so perfer perfectly for that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. So uh, let's uh, go to a bit more serious territory in our discussion. And I wanted to ask you, so together with uh, comedic stuff and horrifying stuff uh, in general, I think that there is also a bit of like provocation in your creative work. And uh, from this standpoint, I want to ask 
I mean, do you agree that art and self-expression must be totally free or are there any borders? And what do you think about censorship? I think everything should be totally free, but you have to accept consequences and know the meaning of it. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, if you want to express it yourself like really, really hardcore and some like uncensored, you have to be willing that somebody might uh, be upset about it or even be angry or take some actions against it. And that's more like your choice if you're expressing yourself so widely. And uh, understand that this world is not all about you. But still, if you want to make a point, if you want to do, like, let's say, like uh, do some nude art in a public places or something like that, that's totally fine for me. But you have to understand that somebody else might not accept it fully. <laughs> but if that's the point of the whole thing, like uh, make some fuss about it. Of course, it's a good way to do it. As long as you're not uh, uh, hurting anyone, mm -hmm. like physically uh, or mentally hurting anyone, like really... <laughs> In a way, you are not not start not trying to be mean, like to the people. I think it's always okay to do, and uh, every now and then it's good to do something extreme to see how the world works nowadays. So we don't forget forget anything. Like uh, when we are talking about Western countries, when if you go to the uh, Far East countries or something Arabic countries, of course, there's a whole different new level. But can't really talk about much about that because I haven't in, ever been there. But like, uh, if we're talking about women's rights or something, that's like a totally new new story then. But uh, if we go to the Helsinki and do some nude art at some <laughs> statue, I think it's like a more or less like a normal thing for us. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, no. <laughs> or maybe, or maybe there's nude art happening right now at the backstage. It seems. Ah. Uh. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So we are quite open-minded, to say at least. Yes, yes, I uh, see that. And uh, actually, uh, the other question I wanted to ask is: um, I really have a very interesting and curious image on stage, but uh, do you see your music outside your image? I mean, would it be generally possible for you? For whatever reason, I mean, I don't want to uh, like imagine some uh, horrible cases like lost luggage or something. Would it be generally possible and would you feel comfortable uh, performing without makeup, without costumes in your um, ordinary clothing or <laughs> would it be challenging? Well, of course, there's like a, it depends who you ask from the band, but that, for example, the makeup, the masks, what we put on it, there's some mm -hmm. kind of well ritual is too strong word but like uh it's like uh going in the mood or getting the game face or something like that mm -hmm. because it's like uh, every show at every show at a certain point we go to our cases and start doing makeup and at the same time my whole body is getting ready at oh yeah soon we are going to do this soon we are going to do this so i think there's this mental side as well but uh, if we talk only about the show of course we can go and do it without the makeup or do it without the costumes but i don't think it would be right for the for the customer for the listener because the show must be full anytime every mm -hmm. time you go to the restaurant you will get to and you order same dish every day the dish should be same every day so same goes with our show if it goes some way it should it it at least should be better than the previous one and uh, we are not so beautiful people, as you can see. So if you take the back, oh, come also, on. <laughs> it's, not going, it's not going to be any better that way. Oh, well. Okay. Uh, so a couple of last questions. And the first one is, uh, can you share some plans uh, for the future with the viewers, with the listeners, with fans? <laughs> I mean, band's plans. So maybe yours personally. Well, bands plans like uh like you might have noticed we are touring in this around europe right now which is like a whole new territory for us we can tour around finland as far, far as we want but uh it seems that our band has decided to try out try out new lands as well and uh the feedback has already been awesome so because of that we are coming back here next february doing our own first headline tour and i have a job for you you can do 
everything you can to help us get more ticket sellers, to get more people here about us, because that's going to be huge, for, and we want to do that. And uh, of course, our own ice hall show, the biggest disco we have ever made, is coming next month. It will be the release party of the Omen X. It will be the ending party of the Global Warning, and uh, it's going to be huge disco. So, and um, the very last question is your message for uh, the fans in this like pre-Christmas time in the end of the year. If you have some family, remember to love them. Remember to have a good holidays. Remember to relax and get ready for the disco mayhem, which is coming next year. We will be there and we want you all, all to be there as well. Yeah.